Hello and welcome to this Fintech Futures interview. My name is Paul Hindle, editor at Fintech Futures, and today I'm joined by John Barber. How are you? Good to see you, Paul. So thank you for having me. Um, yes, John Barber, I'm a VP and head of business for Finical in Europe. So our mission is to deliver better banking um, through, an, through an enablement of better technology. And so great to be here today to, to talk about what's happening. Excellent. Thanks for, no, thanks for coming along and talking to us. So, I mean, maybe just to get things started then, would you like to just give a quick you know, intro into what Inverse is Finical and what you've been doing over there? Yeah, so, so Finical sits as a, a business unit division of, of the bigger Infosys um, family, and we're entirely focused on delivering banking platforms into the market, and that covers uh, a multitude of banking functions across retail, corporate, digital, and also payments. And we have been very successful in the marketplace, um, consistently rated by our industry analysts in the, in the uh, leading positions uh, in the market, and we estimate that we've got over a billion uh, end customers actually operating on Finical worldwide. Excellent, excellent. So, I mean, to kick things off then, digital transformation has been a big talking point now for, for a long time. Um, but what specifically you know, are you seeing that are, that's holding banks back at the moment in terms of their digitization? And, and what should banks and FIs be, be looking at? I think that one of the challenges for banks has been, you know, the piecemeal approach in many cases is how they've attacked digital transformation. And what we've seen over many years is a heavy focus on channel digitization and enabling customer journey, particularly in the retail banking market, which has delivered an amount of success we're all used to now dealing with, um, you know, doing our banking from our phone or online. <coughs> so I'm going to cough. The, um, I, I think the challenge is that that's only delivered um, so much transformation and actually in some of the research that we've done with our partners like EFMA and 11FS, you know, only about 7 to 10% of banks themselves estimate that they're doing actual full transformation at scale. And one of the challenges of that is that the front to back digitization hasn't been done. So whilst you're enabling customer journeys, you're still struggling to deliver straight through processing, still struggling to deliver, you know, a reduction in operating costs in the back end. So I think that's, you know, a current challenge for banks is how do they really digitize from front to back? Um, what we've seen from the pandemic uh, and the impacts of the pandemic on, on how people bank is really accelerating that digital need. And um, if banks are going to truly be able to service their customers from a 360 perspective as well as a straight through you know, process perspective, then they have to start looking at that kind of core transformation to modernize those platforms that might be 20, 30, in some cases, even 40 years old. And in, if they can do that, then they you know, should, should be able to accelerate their digital transformation. Um, one of the things we see is that you know, newer players and leading banks that have really focused on this digital transformation is it really has a very positive impact on things like their cost income ratio, their net promoter scores, et cetera, et cetera. So the leading banks you know, are now talking about cost income ratios down at the 30%, 35% mark, whereas um, banks that haven't been able to, trans to do that front to back transformation are still you know, struggling to pin down that cost income ratio. And I think the other thing is that um, if you can enable that front to back transformation, it also will help banks you know, really move into what is really prevalent at the moment, which is this conversation about ecosystem banking. So whereas banks um, historically have owned the channel, owned the pipeline, owned the product for, for any given customer, what we're seeing numerically is that more and more customers are, um, are doing some of their banking not actually directly via the banking channel. It might be via a third party channel um, or a third party provider. So to really enable that sort of ecosystem banking and being remain relevant at the front end, I think banks have to look at that transformation. We've seen, you know, a number of our customers, um, for instance, you know, uh, Paytm uh, in India, who, you know, started effectively as a digital wallet operator, and by really taking that digital transformation from a front to back, they're now effectively, you know, a super app for banking. They do payments, they do banking, they do, you know, many different things to to provide that customer with a uh, a 360 ability to manage their finances. So with Finical then, how have you looked to help banks approach their own digital transformations then and, and with your core banking tech and, and what makes you stand out from, from the crowd? Sure. So, I mean, from a Finical perspective, what we really invested in is 
being able to deliver better banking, you know, for 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 people out there, um, businesses as well as as retail customers, through you know a heavy set of investments in our in our in building what we call better technology. So really creating enablers for banks to transform how they, you know, run their infrastructure, run their banking services, and and deal with their customers at the end of the day, and. Really, that's been our entire focus, and what we've been able to deliver is, you know, first of all, we're, you know, cloud native in terms, in the sense of where a bank might want to, you know, run its operations from, um, as well as being, you know, componentized and API ready, which means that banks, you know, in the modern day, don't have to always think about, you know, a core transformation is is what we used to call open heart surgery. It's actually, you can do stepwise uh, transformations and, and what we call progressive transformations, which means that banks can transform either in um, sort of a horizontal slice where they might take a piece of their legacy technology out or in a vertical slice where they take, you know, a particular function and move it away from the legacy, be that, a, let's say lending is a good example where banks are trying to modernize their lending practices. So that's how we've um, been approaching uh, or enabling customers to, to really help with their digital transformation. Um, you know, we have a c case like um, Emirates NBD that is probably the largest bank in the Middle East with many um, multinational or uh, international um, operations across many countries. And what we've been able to deliver to, with NBD is, you know, um, a very modern banking platform that covers a full banking uh, requirement. And they've managed to, you know, move away from their um, mainframe in terms of, or their legacy applications, and deliver a banking experience to to customers who do 90% of their banking outside of the branch. And that's really quite transformative in terms of how the bank operates. And what it also does is it enables the bank to really focus in on reducing that technical debt and reducing um, the cost of running those operations. And as I mentioned earlier, you know that has helped them individually to drive down their cost in Cabrillo to actually market leading levels as comparison to any other bank in that region or other regions. So are you still seeing plenty of activity then with banks when it comes to changing their course now or with macroeconomic conditions as they are at the moment? Are banks looking to stick with what they have and, and build on top of that? So I think we're at a really interesting inflection point. Um, from a bank's perspective, the improving interest rate environment means that maybe they're feeling more confident about taking on some of these challenges, whilst at the same time having an eye on what might happen business-wise through things like loan impairment or you know, reduction in the overall business. So from a, the conversations that I'm having with CEOs and CIOs in the market is actually they're absolutely trying to think about how they might you know, refresh their core banking platforms. And again, partially driven by what's happened uh, from the pandemic and that acceleration of digital banking and partially um, driven by the fact that these systems from a legacy perspective are now you know approaching end of life in many cases and as i touched on before if you're trying to deliver new business models or deliver new ecosystem kind of banking services then you know banks are going to have a great deal of trouble in doing that if they don't you know attack that kind of legacy core banking platform and one of the things we're seeing is this sort of idea of progressive modernization again such that we don't have to be taking banks on a you know a multi-year journey before they see benefit of this kind of transformation so they can pick functional areas that they modernize piece by piece and they can move those operations away from the legacy framework that they might be operating on um, we've got a customer in the us um, called discover financial services or dfs who've done exactly that kind of journey with us and they've moved on a very progressive transformation um, by attacking different parts of their internal uh, banking platforms to modernize in the ways that I articulated earlier. So from a, you know, a componentized, cloud-ready, um, API-centric model. And what they've been able to do as a result of that is really get to a point where they can do absolute real-time processing for a large volume of customers. Um, from a payments perspective, they can deliver real-time payments you know and be keeping both the bank and the customer informed of those at, at uh, you know at the point of activity and they've also again managed this this kind of really important factor they've managed to use that transformation not only to attract customers but also reduce that sort of technical debt around uh, their legacy platforms and that that directly can impact the, the cost income ratios that banks like dfs are, are, you know are trying to get away from so what would you say are some of the key benefits then of, of updating a core at the moment and why are banks still on the fence about that? 
So I think you know banks are still on the fence because it is a significant undertaking that they need to think about and plan for very carefully. Um, but the benefits are, you know, that the bank can really become a, you know, a digital player, you know, almost like a technology company, and that's how banks need to start thinking about these transformations. And when we look at the successful banks um, like DBS, for example, in Singapore, they have really absolutely run a program that makes them think like a digital, you know, like a digital. Uh, technology company as opposed to a digital bank and that's reaped massive benefits for them and they've got industry-wide recognition for that. So the challenge is, uh, is, is not insignificant but it's also not insurmountable. Um, I think the benefits are that they will you know make themselves future ready which in real terms actually needs to be now ready you know so that's where the market is where customer expectations are um, you know both from a, um, a digital um, banking perspective but also how that bank fits in a customer's own ecosystem of how the services they want to provide. Um, I think it future proofs them from a technology perspective, um, you know, having moved away from um, the, the legacy applications and legacy cores, and it gives them a great deal more agility as a bank in the market. So again, we see customers um, who have made this transformation can make really significant steps in how quickly they can launch products, you know, how quickly they can react to customer need. And it really gives them an edge if you think that, you know, and a differentiator for customers to think about banking with those banks versus um, players that may not have started that kind of core transformation journey yet. So I think there's many, many advantages, both from a technology perspective as well as from an impact on their business perspective that really looking at transforming that core gives them. And again, I think through the technology modernization and the types of technology we bring to the table, they can do that in a really risk mitigated way. Right, so they can you know, manage this progressive or stepwise transformation um, for their technology and for their business without putting it at risk. And I think that's one of the significant benefits that banks thinking about their core should be, should be looking at today. So what do you think the next step is or the, the next major breakthrough then for, for core banking and digital transformation? So I think there's, there's a number of technology areas that are becoming um, more mainstream, whether that be um, around AI, whether that be around um, you know, some of the key attributes of analytics and, and as well as you know almost a re-emergence of um, distributed finance technology as well so we see those sort of trends um, I think on top of that actually the area that is really ripe for transformation is actually looking at the corporate banking side and you know whereas you might say on the retail side there's a lot as we talked about at the front end where that digital journey has been enabled a lot of corporate banks are now looking at that and how do they replicate that in the corporate environment. And I think that, you know, there's a, we see a very big demand in the market for, you know, corporate banks to be able to put the capabilities in the hands of, you know, the corporate treasurer in, in their customer. So we see a lot of um, activity around there as, as probably the next major wave of digital trans transformation, looking at, um, looking at corporate banking capabilities. We have an example with Santander where, you know, we've enabled them to do exactly that with some of our corporate banking capability. And what they've done is effectively taken their transaction banking around cash and liquidity um, and payments services for corporates and enabled that through Finical to the actual end customer. So, so the, 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 you know, in a sense, our customer's customer is now on the front end of um, delivering their, their services you know, via a, a, you know, a digital experience. And that makes a huge difference. It makes a huge difference to the end corporate in the sense of they feel like they have more control over how they're managing their, their uh, book. And also it makes a huge difference to the banks if you think about what that can do from a cost perspective, um, where if the customer can increase the percentage of the services that they're managing by themselves, that can decrease the amount of spend that the bank has to make internally not just from an IT perspective, but from a you know relationship managers and the the human touch element of that. Now, I don't foresee that the human touch element goes away um, at all, but it means that you know the banks can deliver a better service to customers through that. And Santander have delivered that in the UK and Spain, and we continue to roll that out um, across Europe over the over the coming months and years. So, what does the the near term future look like then for financial services? And is there anything that you're particularly excited about? So I think the near term future will be a continued push of this um, digital enablement story that we're, we've been talking about um, for banks and, and really turning themselves into you know, technology companies as well as banks in terms of how they think about servicing their customers. 
and with that, I think there's you know still a, a huge amount of transformation um, and activity that banks can undertake to do that. Again, I think we we've used um, partners like FMA and 11FS to look at how banks think they're they're transforming, and you know the percentage of banks that think they've achieved true digital transformation is still relatively small, even by their own analysis. Um, and in terms of what comes next, you know I think through um, technology and this sort of ecosystem approach to banking. The, the underlying factor is how do banks really sort of use and manage and, and uh, use data for the benefit of customers. And I think if you look at that kind of data layer and how it's much easier for banks now to access data um, and interpret data and react in real time or near real time to what customer demands are, then I think that will continue to evolve and continue to be a really exciting area for banks to, to focus on to help them um, you know, continue on that transformation journey and really focus on what that customer's uh, you know, lifetime experience looks like. If banks don't do this, what's the counter? The counter is that, you know, and some banks may be happy to effectively act like a utility company and so that they are just a provider of some base level services that are then fed into the ecosystem. But if banks want to really be at the front end of that and be leading players in, in any given market, I think those are the things they're going to have to need to focus on going forward. John, thanks so much for, for joining us. It's been great speaking with you. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. Lovely to meet you. Thank you.